Many thanks for joining us on the newsroom at this time. I am Abisola Adebayo. The Zoning Committee of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has concluded its sitting on the party's zoning arrangement. Chairman of the committee, Governor Samuel Autumn of Benue State, who briefed journalists at the end of the committee's meeting in Abuja, says members have reached a unanimous agreement on the matter. He, however, declined to speak on what the position of the committee is. The PDP zoning committee was inaugurated on March 24th by the National Working Committee following the controversies surrounding the party's arrangement for the presidency ahead of the 2023 general elections. The Nigerian Railway Corporation has announced that it had still not been able to establish contact with 163 passengers and seven crew members who boarded the Abuja to Kaduna train that was attacked. Two, the NRC's managing director, Fideto Hiria, disclosed this in the sixth update from the corporation in respect to the train attack. He further clarified that 191 passengers have been confirmed safe and were in their various homes with their families, adding that work is still ongoing to get the rail line back to operations. The federal government says it has detected over 1,500 workers who presented fake letters of employment to its verification committee. The head of the civil service of the federation, Folashade Yemieson, made this known in a keynote address at the National Policy Dialogue on Entrenching Transparency in Public Office Recruitment in Nigeria, organized by the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission in Abuja on Tuesday. Yemieson said the federal government has suspended the salary of 3,000 civil servants who fail to present themselves for verification. She said the verification exercise is to eradicate fake and illegal recruitment in government agencies. In view of the declining number of cases in Nigeria, the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19 has revealed the country's response to the pandemic. In a statement released on Wednesday, the committee explained that the decision followed the reduced risk of importation of new variants as well as the availability of vaccines and the increasing number of people vaccinated in the country and globally. According to the committee, social restriction recommendations were revised in line with the three established thematic areas, namely movement, industry and labor as well as community activities. Also, the PSC said there are no more formal restrictions on movement within the country as the nationwide curfew imposed from 12 mid midnight to 4 a.m. has been lifted. The House of Representatives Ad Hoc Committee on Unclaimed Funds in Commercial Banks and the Infraction of the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, says the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund owes the federal government 3.8 billion naira. The chairman of the committee, Unyime Idem, who made this known at the ongoing investigative hearing by the panel on Tuesday, says that the sum represented the amount that the NSITF failed to remit to the government between 2016 to 2018. According to him, the agency submitted audited financial statements for only this period and the debt figure was arrived at by the committee from the documents it received. Days after rebels had declared a unilateral ceasefire to make way for talks with the government, fresh fighting broke out in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo in the early hours of Wednesday. In the last few days, about 6,000 refugees who had returned home in Dira, Congo, have fled back to neighboring Uganda. According to reports, government forces are fighting to retake villages in Ruchuru area in North Kivu province that are currently occupied by the M23 rebels. Meanwhile, regional leaders are expected to meet this week over negotiations between the government and the rebels. International professional football side Napoli have raised the price tag of Nigeria international Victor Simen to 120 million euros after several European clubs including Arsenal, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Tottenham, New Newcastle and others indicated interest in signing him. The 23-year-old has been Napoli's best player this season, scoring 15 goals in 25 appearances in all competitions and providing four assists despite spells on the sidelines due to injuries and COVID-19. Also, Osimhen's performance in Syria A has earned him two Player of the Month awards for September 2021 and February 2022. That's all on the newsroom at this time. Do join us at the top of the hour for more updates. Many thanks for watching.